Good morning, folks. Today we're going to have eye candy, a little cosmological slap, some darn good disaster-related articles too. But we have two space weather watches for today, so let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on the sun was much quieter, especially up at the northern active region. The large coronal hole is departing on the right. Let's look closer at both of them. Starting with the sunspots, which are stable and not really morphing or growing, FYI, during the peak of sunspot maximum, all those little light scratches behind the sunspot will carry sunspots as well. While we watch for it to flare today, I want to show the official space weather forecast for geomagnetic conditions that came out yesterday. Yesterday they had expected the coronal hole stream to arrive at night and produce a minor geomagnetic storm. The coronal hole stream is late, hasn't arrived yet, must be weaker than expected, and so when it arrives today, it better not produce a stronger geomagnetic storm than was forecast for the stronger impact yesterday. Quick jump to seismicity where pressure was released on the Pacific Ridge. Always lucky when the large ones hit well out to sea. But here, they can often trigger the coastline faults to the east a day or two later. On to the science articles where we'll start with Tesla. Here we not only get a proper respect of his electrical work, but the focus is actually on the fluid dynamics work here. It is much less known, but just as amazing. Read about the Tesla valve at the link below. How about a bit of eye candy next? A twofer starting at S mode, which has eyes to make an artist jealous. Phytoplankton bloom in the Atlantic. The second eye candy is at the stellar level, and it's the brand new Star Forge simulations covering the jets, formation conditions, and development of the environment surrounding them as stellar ignition begins. These simulations will be tested as James Webb will be able to probe similar regions across the heavens in various stages of this development. Quick little moment for those who know how many problems exist with their black hole models. Not exactly what Hawking envisioned 30 years ago. And once again, I really can't remember the last time they looked in the real universe and weren't surprised by what they saw. At what point do you stop putting band-aids on an ever-failing model and ask if you need to go back to the drawing board? Anyway... One more thing of interest before we hit the top stories. Cool little piece here on a whale discovered hundreds of miles from the sea in Vermont, dating back to the last disaster. Observers will need to read between the lines on that mainstream article. A triple up next, all tying back to the special video from a week ago on the galactic current sheet and stellar triggering. Let's begin with another look at the galactic plane. Not stars, but patterns of excess emission from the warm ionized medium, the plasma. Let me just go ahead and toss the lines on there in case the uniform shapes, even if not the density distribution of the interstellar plasma, isn't exactly random here. Every time they look, they spot an essence of the sheet. The mainstream is starting to hit on those isotope papers we shared a few days ago. This would be from the perspective that doesn't factor in the damage of such approximate supernova, or the fact that dust is trapped in the remnant and not blasted across space. They offered options because the real answer, the solar micronova, is not exactly a tool they have in their toolbox. And last but not least, a debunking of an exoplanet is about a thousand times more than just the debunking of an exoplanet. At Barnard Star, it means they were sunspots, stellar activity, tricking the scientists, and the once non-flaring star is now confirmed to still be activated. We've gone over how the flare star Proxima activated with a super flare and has continued to break flare records since then. We cover those stories when they come out. But before that happened, Barnard was thought to be inactive until it roared to life and apparently has kept going and tricked the scientists into thinking it had a planet. In reality, the two closest stars, both towards the galactic center, have activated and stayed active in the last few years. In addition to suggesting that the Sun is next, recall that AD Leo, the tiny weak star in line with the Sun from the center of the galaxy but well to the north, it has also activated. This confirmation today on Barnard solidifies that the nearby stars have activated, complementing the changes we've seen throughout our solar system and on the Sun. We greatly appreciate your support. Check out that video if you missed it. It is linked in your list right below the video today. And below that video are the background videos on the nearby stars, planets, and overall disaster unfolding now. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.